All right, guys, welcome to the show. Today's video is about the Markham Quest HD and one year after use. Coming up next. Welcome back, guys. I'm Rush. Thanks for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, I'd advise you to drop down, leave a comment, and be a subscriber if you enjoy this video. Without any further ado, let's get right into this bad boy. I've owned the Markham Quest for a little over, I'd say, a year now. Uh, I've used it quite a bit. I used it all last year. The few things that I do love about it are that um, if you're trying to record underwater footage in any way, shape, or form, this is a very easy and simple unit to do it in. It's got the HDMI adapter right in the back of the screen. You can plug it into an actual big TV if you want, or you can just plug it into your Avermedia game capture. Super easy, super simple. One thing that I really do enjoy about this, this particular unit. Uh, another thing that I also like about it is that it gets the footage in a 1080p format, which is high definition. It also records it in 60 frames a second. So that's pretty cool, especially if you're filming stuff, if you want like fun slow motion and stuff, like real slow motion, buttery smooth slow motion, this is the unit to have. The AquaViews do not record in 60 frames a second. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the one couple things that I don't like about the unit are that the battery life on it isn't too outstanding. I can blow through a nine amp hour battery, the one that comes with it, in like five hours, it's done, it's toasted. So with that being said, that kind of sucks. Uh, you might want to get a Dakota Lithium if you get an underwater camera or have a couple backup batteries for it. And another thing that I really hate about this camera is that the LEDs on the camera that it uses for its night mode, its awesome night mode, uh, scares the fish away. I've been fishing with crappies. I'll even probably show you a little clip right now if I have it, uh, of it scaring the fish away. It kind of sucks because that's the only way to see at night and at dusk. There's really no, or dawn and dusk, there's really no other way to see with this camera. Uh, that is one thing the AquaViews have the advantage over is the infrared. So that's one thing that I really don't like about this camera. Uh, but it, it really is the only thing that I don't like about it. Other than that, it's a very, it, it, other than that, it's a beautiful camera. The footage that it takes is gorgeous. Uh, if you're a guide and you want to show your clients some like really killer footage, crystal clear, really smooth quality footage, this is the camera to have. If you're fishing a really clear lake, this is a money money unit, especially during the day. Uh, but other than that, there's not much else to say about it. Uh, the color kill profile on it is kind of nice. Sorry, I don't have my camera panner here. It's at my house. <clears throat> The camera panner, in my opinion, the Markham camera panner, compared to the AquaView, is trash. I hate the Markham camera panner. I repeat, I hate the Markham camera panner. It's trash. It literally sits in the water. I don't know why or how they designed it like that, but it's bad. It's horrible. AquaView had the bright idea of lifting the cord above the water. Markham wanted to put it into the water. It was stupid. Possibly the stupidest ice fishing incorporation of any equipment I've ever seen is the Markham camera panner. Just a tr garbage, garbage panner. Uh, I'm pretty sure mine's broken because it sat in water like all year long uh, and it's at my house right now. I did forget it though, so that kind of sucks. So we're using the camera stand, the, the tripod. So yeah, other than that, uh, the camera panner sucks and the LEDs on this camera suck. Other than that, pretty much everything is killer about this camera. It's a beautiful camera works well, very portable, wraps up in itself, uh, the cord wraps up nice, the camera goes inside the bundle kind of conveniently, kind of a pain in the ass sometimes, but it is what it is, guys. Uh, either way, whatever camera you get, you're going to be getting wet hands, so be prepared for that. But for the most part, the Markham Quest is a very nice camera. Uh, I just wish it had infrared and no LED lights. That's all. So. But yeah, after one year of use, the Markham Quest HD has held up pretty good. Uh, even in really cold situations, the screen doesn't really freeze up at all. Uh, the actual sun guard that fits over it works pretty well. Uh, nothing, no product out there lasts, has a bright enough screen for outside on the ice. So it does its best, but it's still kind of dim. Uh, but yeah, after a year, 
I still like it. I might upgrade to the AquaView simply for the fact that it has the infrared because I need the infrared for nighttime filming personally. But if you don't need that, this is a great unit. Uh, it's cheaper than the AquaView and uh, really is a badass little unit, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you have not already. We'll see you in the next one.